All right. We are back with very similar deck. Very, very similar, except Golos is the commander. And um, the deck got a lot stronger because of that. Also, I took out some of the really expensive stuff. I might even take out Ulamog, actually. Um, just because the goal is to play three lands, one of your three mana ramp spells, Golos, and then an untapped land, and then you're straight into seven mana, so you can cast all of this very easily with like the World Tree and stuff. What's different about this deck in my usual Golos decks is there's nothing that, there's no ramp spells that are one or two. Um, so you can sort of just completely concede that you're not really that good against anything aggressive and you're not trying to aggressively cast Golos and you're not playing Mana Dorks. And when you play Mana Dorks and then they die, you start falling behind on your recurring Golos uh, enter the battlefield effect as you want your mana sources to survive so you can keep casting him. I'm running 10 basics. Uh, I think you really want more untapped lands than not, especially when your commander's colorless. It really doesn't matter, especially when your commander's not only colorless, gets you all five colors instantly with the world tree, which is insane. So I am going to drop Ulamog, actually. I was been playing, a, I played a bunch of games before I uh, started recording with this deck, and I really like it so far. What else did I change from last time? Um, took out the five minute curse. I think I'm going to take out Gilded Lotus as well. Um, for another three mana ramp spell. I think that's really what we're going to be. Actually, let's look at what we, we don't have in the deck already. Because I added 10 basics. There's 42 lands in the deck, which is absolutely insane. I can guarantee that is the most I've ever ran in the single deck. Um, not super big on Haro. Well, there's certainly three mana ramp spells I'm not, I'm not playing. Uh, I could do a four mana one, but like I said, four mana is absolutely where you want to cast Golos every game. We kind of have like a very spearheaded game plan with this deck, which is kind of cool. Let's run Grow From the Ashes. I guess it's a three and a five. We have enough basics to pull this off now. Even Haro, actually. We do have enough basics to pull this off. It basically costs one mana to cast Haro, because you get the two lands untapped. Um, I don't know... Sort of color fixes you. Alright, let's do that. We're just super, super in on turn 3 ramp spell. And yeah. And let's play more magic. It's kind of similar. I know it's kind of back-to-back -back for my videos. To play the same kind of strategy. But uh, I'm having fun with this deck. And it, I've changed enough of it that it feels very different. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. And let's play Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering. I've only lost one game so far with this deck off stream. Not a massive card uh, sample size of games, but it was like two hours? Something like that. I only lost one game. I don't know how many games I got in, though. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so we have a three mana ramp spell. Actually, we have a mana rock, too. Okay. I don't think I've had a hand with four lands in it. I don't know if there's an algorithm that's, like, preventing that. Excuse me. But it hasn't happened to my knowledge. Maybe it has and I haven't paid attention. But I don't believe I have opened up with a hand of four lands. Uh, your first two lands being tapped is fine. The next three you don't really want to have tapped because you want untapped on turn three for a three mana ramp spell, and then untapped for four for Golos, and then untapped on five for a seven mana spell out of hand. We don't have the seven mana spell though, but I still really like this hand here. We drew another land. I'm actually gonna run this out because I just wanna get a land out of hand here. It feels really good to do that. 
If I can get an extra land out of this, I think I'm going to try to do that. The five color part of this isn't a big deal. That's kind of annoying. Um, all right, we can drop the Fierce Empath. It's kind of similar to Grim Tutor, and I don't want to lose a land here when I still have this in play, actually. So we play one land, we play Golos to get Feel the Dead, and then we get a zombie immediately, because we get to play a second land. Foregoing the World Tree here, but that's fine. Feel the Dead is very strong against Nicol Bolas, because it's a Planeswalker that just uh, gets harassed by 2-2 two -two zombies. Zombies. Whoops, I should close out Discord. There we go. Alright, they draw two. No removal spell. Uh, not interested in playing their commander. Oh, they couldn't. They had double blue. Alright, Nezahal is very strong here. Activating Golos is strong. But I think this is stronger. Yeah. I'll play a land. I get a zombie. I scry. I don't want that. I don't really care about this. And I don't see a reason to swing. Nezahal is very good here. It's hard for them to kill it. Um, the moment they go to kill it, I draw a card, and then I can exile it. They're going to name Odd, because my entire board is Odd, so... I think I'm going to protect this. I think it's strong. Is it? These two cards are very strong. But no, we're losing our whole board, though, so... Uh, I think it makes sense. And this way I have something to do next turn, which is just recast Golos... They shock themselves? Alright, well, that's really bad. Alright, never mind. Never punished. Because now they can't uh, counterspell this, and I can still kill this. It looks like they have a counterspell up. Pretty blatantly obvious, and this is a huge draw for that. Because I killed Nicol Bolas. Yeah, that was really good. Nezahal is no longer protected, though. But uh, that's probably fine. They don't... They need a black source to cast... Yeah, they need one black source to cast their commander. That is not a black source. That is actually totally fine. I will cycle this. It costs five minutes to cast because of the statue. Alright, we, we drew another one. Alright, so now we have protection again because when they go to kill it, I'll draw a card. Unfortunately, Golos cost too much mana. I think I'm going to do this. Doing that lets me play a land, get a zombie, and I still have three cards in hand. I don't see a reason to cast the ring. They're also extremely low, so they have to find a way to deal with the board and not die to Chandra. Chandra. That is an answer to nothing relevant. Yeah, all right, we win. It does kill uh, Chandra, though. Nice, look at that. <laughs> Nezahal getting in there. That's the first time I've cast it. Uh, definitely a questionable decision to discard two tutors against an opponent who's really on the back foot. But they're no longer on the back foot if I lose my 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, is it a whale or a kraken? I think it's a whale. That's funny. We had two uncounterable cards in that game. Uh, only one was relevant. Because uh, they shock themselves the steam vent to leave up probably Tail's End or something. And you can't counter this. No, 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 no. Alright, so two lands and poop. Two lands again. Wow, alright. There's 42 lands in the deck. Play this as black or blue? Yeah, blue. Turn one passage. Passage. Uh, pretty likely we draw land. If we don't, well, you know, we had fun. I've played against this commander more than Keenan, thankfully. A lot more than Keenan. Especially today, I've played against this like every other uh, game here. Alright, that's very unfortunate, but I guess we'll stay in the game here. We lost our, our theorycraft opener is no longer here. Okay. What does that make Golos cost two more? I don't know what else you'd name. Alright. 
so this is bad. I didn't draw land. There's land. I guess I kind of need it there. Um, I can River's Rebuke to come back from here? I don't know. At least River's Rebuke might make them discard to hand size. I can't really play Shark Typhoon because there's 16 O-Rings in the deck. So I don't want to put anything into play. I mean, I already did, but... They also, if they paid attention, I did not play a land. So it definitely makes sense to exile my Mana Rock. Put an invitation counter on this. If you attacked with two or more creatures, draw. Otherwise... Okay, um, what does this do? Yeah. Alright, we're not going to play this game anymore. I'm I'm starting to think that that commander is um, in contention for the strongest commander. But it is very weak to uh, um, board wipes. Like, it doesn't... Like, they have a bunch of enchantments, sure, but it doesn't fare well if your board gets swept over and over. Because you have a bunch of enchantments and they don't do much outside of just sitting there looking fancy. Alright, if we draw two more lands, we have the uh, turn three ramp into turn for this turn five. <clears throat> um, activation. Or just seven drop like this or this. Hopefully Star of Extinction is good here. If our opponent gets Essica into play before we can blow up one of their lands, uh, we're going to be kind of sad, but that's more likely to happen than not. Yep. Alright. We can bounce it, though, I guess. Do we want this? New. No. Okay, apparently I blew my opponent's mind somehow. Oh, they had their own. Okay. So they have Jeskai in two, so they can Essica next turn. They play my... Oh, they play Emergent Sequence. I can actually blow that up with um, Star of Extinction and get two lands out of them. That's kind of funny. So do we Mana Rock, or do we just Golos? I think we Golos. It threatens the activation, so maybe our opponent doesn't cast Essica, tries to deal with this. Zombies don't feel too strong in this matchup, but whatever. I don't think we need a uh, color help here. Alright, they actually do not go for Essica, which I kind of disagree with. But it makes Star of Extinction a little bit worse now, because if I cast it, they can still cast the bridge. I also need an untapped land for it to be a thing anyways. Alright, so here I will blow up their stuff. I'm going to blow up their... Uh, doesn't really matter. Not really. I could just hit this because it's both green. I could hit that for both blue. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just blowing up two lands seems nice. <laughs> Boat is getting excited. And then if they play their commander, we can now just win by stealing it. And they scoop because of Agent of Treachery. All right, it was getting a little little sketch there in the middle, but uh, we certainly turned it around. Oh wow. Okay. They got Vanquish the Horde on top. That's unfortunate for us, I guess. All right, they're still in it. They're still in it. Nice. Usually people scoop when that happens. <laughs> but they want to see me win. So we saw some for four. We probably get swept by the board sweeper, which we're totally fine with. Obviously, Golos doesn't care to die or not. We have so many lands. There's what, like 42 lands. Um, Golos activations are not strong at all. They have two sweepers. Okay. Definitely do this again. Um, I guess I can get a scry land at this point. Alright, I'll keep a land, because if Golos dies again, we can just 
play land, recast them, so on and so forth. Opponent finds a land of their own. We're going to Rivers Rebuke them. Not only does it bounce these two, it gets rid of this. It's really the only way I can do that right now, so certainly going to do it. I don't think the game was over. Um, you can simply recast your, your commander there, right? And to the extent of their knowledge, I have no answer to it. I did have an answer because I had a Grim Tutor in hand, but uh, yeah. They just take a turn off to cast these again. Yeah, I mean, it is it is pretty bad, actually, because they didn't have a green source, so they actually couldn't replay the Prismatic Bridge. So I guess it paid off that I blew up those two lands. Exactly. But it would have worked if I blew up two blue lands as well, I think. Nice. Oh, we got a pack. Boop! <gasps> Never heard of it. Up to one target, blah, 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 blah. Cool. All right. We are... Was that two and one? Or three and one? No, that was two and one. I can't remember what... What was the first game I started recording on? No, wait. What am I talking about? No, we're two and one, right? I'm kind of scared that I can't remember. It's only been 16 minutes. Oh, my God. All right, moving on. Nizza Hall again against a Grixis deck. Uh, this is fine. These aren't really good, though, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this might not even be good either because it is Grixis, and there's plenty of counters. I mean, uh, discard spells. So there's that. There's that. All right, so hopefully no counter on the wheel here. Nope. Um... Definitely going to Windmill Slam Golos. I've never seen that portrait, that avatar before. The Wanderer is still my favorite. It's just so, like, ambiguous. I think this is the Wanderer. It's technically not, like, the Wanderer Planeswalker art. So, I don't know. The Traveler? Pretty sure it has a name. I just can't remember. It's the only thing I've, like, put money into in this game, so. Alright, no Tails in? Alright, looks like Tails in. Or Essence Scatter. Or Reject. Yep. Okay, that's unfortunate. So we kind of skipped the dream here. Four minute Nickel Bolas? Nope, nothing. Alright, uh... We are going to tutor for probably a mana rock. Chromatic Lantern, probably. There's no discard spells, obviously. We nothing discard. I could get something that deals with Nicol Bolas next turn. They have perfect Nicol Bolas with basic lands, which is kind of insane. Can we casualties? Black, black, green. Yep. So we can casualties next turn, if that is what I get, but... Our opponent would have to go for their commander. I mean, agent is literally better than casualties, isn't it? And blowing up a land is good, though. I could get... No, we're not going to have another commander. Could get cultivate, too. I think casualties of war is better than agent here. I could be completely wrong about that, actually. Where the heck is Casualties of War? Hello? Casualties? Hello? What? Alright, running out of time. Agent it is. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Opponent says, your go. Yeah, I know how the game works. I'm not sure... where Casualties of War is? Huh. It might not be in the deck. Okay, they actually just cast their commander. So if I did get Casualties of War, we could have destroyed their soul. But I didn't. Um. Yep, yeah, well, this is very bad now. Because now they untap. And have nothing to show for it. I guess I can get Kama for what it's worth. 
Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, Casualties of War right there was absolutely insane. I don't know where it was. I'm very certain it is in my deck, though. They tap out off of blue again, though. And they play... What? Okay. Sure. That's very weird. I've never seen this before. We don't draw land. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> play this and do nothing? Oh, jeez. That's unbelievable. Whatever. That's crazy. Fine. Fine. They're definitely not going to mind this again. Reveal card, put it in your hand, lose life. So it's like a dark confidant trigger or something. Uh, let's get rid of that. It's not strong here. I might even take out the teamer ultimatum because there are so many lands. It's super likely to hit like four. Okay. So they can cleave that. They duress first to see what they want to do. Duress misses, but this won't. So we lose Agent, but we do have two other things that are pretty strong. One of them is very difficult to deal with. But they have to take Agent at least, so we keep the other two that are decent enough. You can't not take Agent. That, uh, that makes me think they have another discard spell. Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I'm, I, uh, I'm confused. I don't understand. This seems odd to me, but we'll take it. I don't know what that. I don't know. They probably have a way to kill their own nickel bolus, but that's totally fine. That's very strange. I'm starting to think there's no counter spells in their deck. By the way, they're playing. They're all right, dude. Now I'm scared. Now I don't know what's going on. They didn't even kill this on their turn, so I get to activate it. I have no idea what's going on. They let me... they left mana up too. So okay, they stifle and bounce. Okay, I I still think that's weird though. Because you have to replay... No, but now I have this. Oh, I don't know. I think I think our opponent could have done that differently. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, now they can't even cast their commander because it just dies. And I just sacrifice Agent of Treachery, I guess? I don't think I'm getting rid of a land here. Certainly a very, very strange sequence of play. Uh, can they leave up Tails End, maybe? They can leave up Tail's End. So, but I mean, these are uncounterable. Oh, ooh, that was really good. Okay. Kind of, kind of massive, actually. Yeah, that was backbreaking. And they had the feed to swarm. All right, opponent is right back in it. <laughs> A Mind Rot and the only Grixis card in the game that lets you kill enchantments. So that's pretty good for them. Other than, like, bouncing it, but obviously that's not a big deal. Alright, so let's see how you deal with Le Field of the Dead. But here we are where Golos is um, going to have a high chance of hitting lands. But it is three cards a turn regardless, right? Meat Hook for five. Yep, that's fine. You can always recast Golos, no big deal. Opponent doesn't really develop. I do gain some life, though. They have a land in hand. Okay. We just do it again. We get a temple this time. We don't really need the world tree. I would just like to scry. Uh, I guess we get the off-color one here. Doesn't matter. Go away. Land. And we can yet again do this next turn. So we can keep doing this. And as long as we have temples, we can always scry as well. So it's not... Like, we're doing absolutely nothing. 
A minus three would be good to see here. A plus is fine too. We just get rid of a zombie. A zombie. It does mean nickel bullets can survive if it with a single removal spell, but they kill Gullos anyways, and that's it was gonna happen. I'm doing this pre-combat, you never know. Land, mana rock, land. Unfortunate. Can I do it again? One, two, three, four, five. I cannot do it again. Alright, so let's attack Nickel Bolas. I don't think it's going to work, but... As long as we have Field of the Dead, we're in a good spot. Alright, yeah, so there was no way we were going to kill Nickel, uh, Nickel Bolas if we sacrifice anything but a zombie. Okay. We're going to play double Mana Rock here. They have a lot of discard spells, so I would like to just get these out of hand. I'm so confused that they took Karuga in that turn sequence, though. Here we will sacrifice probably you. We don't want to lose a land, and these are fine to get rid of. I want zombies to present lethal on Nicol Bolas. Uh, as unlikely as it is to occur. And now they have counter magic up, so Gullus gets a little bit weaker. But still not totally dead. I could draw off of lockets, too, if I wanted to. But I think Gullus is fine. Oh, no, they just killed their own commander for some reason. Um, okay. Sure. I think it's safe to assume our opponent's playing this strange. It's not just me. I'm going to actually... I'm going to play this first. Because if this resolves, I can just get this in play. Uh, is that what I want to do? It's better than this, yeah. And if it doesn't resolve, we can cast Golos. Okay. So now we have Golos. Temple Scry. Make sure there's... Yep, there's no other land I want to get. So Temple Scry. Go away. Alright. He always comes with a zombie too. It's kind of funny. So they can't really minus Nicol Bolas. Because it'll just die. Unless they have another removal spell, but... That's totally fine. We can recast Golos again. Golos is just so, so dirty. Alright, let's see if this works. It looks like it will. Um, between these two, I actually prefer this. Yeah, we think we prefer that. Well, maybe this is better. If something's going to get countered, I guess I prefer it to be this. Right? We want to make sure we always have the mana to cast Golos if it gets countered, so we don't have to wait for two mana drops in a row. Alright, it got cracked. We have 13, 1, 2, 3. There's no reason to draw two here, I don't think. Especially when they have discard spells. So I'm going to do it on their end step. I'm going to get rid of a zombie. Okay, they have nothing. We draw... Two lands. Rip. Um, Golos again. They have another counter spell. Sink and paper two. Could I have played around it? I suppose I could have played around it. Yeah. Didn't. It wasn't on my radar, but I could have. All right. Um, do we get rid of a... I think we start getting rid of lands instead of the mana rocks at this point. We're kind of done with mana. I just want to start making sure Nicol Bolas can't ultimate and just kill me out of nowhere. That would be kind of unfortunate. So let's go to combat. See if we can hit it for two. It is drawing two cards a turn. It's kind of annoying. Can't cast this. Uh, I can play this and cast it, but... I think we're actually just going to draw two here. P 
opponent casts Oct. I feel like they want to do that on their own turn in a scenario like this to make sure they have a game plan before I start doing things. Could be wrong, though. I feel like that's what I would want to do. And I'd be surprised if they countered this. So we can get Temple, Temple? <laughs> Running out of Temples. What? Okay, whatever. Apparently Casualties of War is, in fact, in my deck. I just couldn't find it. So Untap Source lets us play another Mana Rock here, which I'd want to do in the face of uh, all these discard spells from them. I think this makes sense. There's a chance they, they're running even a uh, Mind Rot. And I will get rid of a land with Nicobolus' plus. Yep, looks like they did have one. So that paid off. Fortunately, it completely whiffed. They went down a card. They didn't cycle this. And just missed my Casualties of War. We get rid of a basic. Alright, well, they dealt with that again. Um, I'm still going to try to sweep the board here. Probably blow that up instead of... They have no artifacts, right? No. So blow this up. I don't really care about the meat hook making them... Like, it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Ma making them gain life doesn't seem super relevant. So can I play... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, we can't. So we can just draw from... This. Still have enough mana to draw something good here. Or, and then just play it. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Oh my god. Well, at least those are out of the way now. I can, in fact, play that, so I will. Play it on Field of the Dead? Sure. Why not? Give me another mana color there. Could have moved to my next phase before I put the zombie in play. Okay, it didn't end up mattering, but it could have. So they can recast their commander, and we have, again, no pressure on it. But it is a lot of mana. But it isn't all their mana. I might even sacrifice the gift here. Feels like it's free to do that, right? Just, I don't really need this to tap for color. Good grief. Okay. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. All right, well. <laughs> uh, this is this game is insane. We've both seen uh, pretty much the same amount of cards, too. It's kind of funny. Let's just get rid of a land over there. Beacon Bolt. Okay, they can cast that again. So Golos won't survive. It does cost a card in hand, but... I can reset our hands. I feel like that's not a good idea, so I'm not going to do it. Okay. Uh, we do need to draw a land now to recast Golos once more. Uh, which we're not even close to running out of lands. So there's an argument to put a land on top here if it's untapped. Yep. So we have access to Golos again. I can end step emergency powers. Does not feel good though. They are a Grixis deck, and we've learned that they have counter spells. Um, oh right, we have to sacrifice something. If we want to cast Golos again, we gotta get rid of this because the mana cost of things in the mountain. Okay, they got rid of my emergency powers. They have a lot of discard spells. It's kind of crazy. Getting a little light on lands. Oh, all right, nice. They're out of stuff, so we can finally get this to resolve. It will die to Beacon Bolt, but we get a zombie. Um, is this going to ultimate on us? Probably. <laughs> Probably, but let's see what happens. This game has been crazy. Do we have another temple? Nope. No more temple, so I guess it's time to get the world tree.
There's also not a lot of very strong things left in my deck, per se. Um, doesn't really matter what I do. Let's get rid of that. They have to sweep the board um, to deal with their ultimate. All right, they didn't, so we get to make sure the ultimate doesn't happen on Nicol Bolas and immediately lose the game. We're taking a fair amount of damage. All right, that probably just completely destroyed our opponent. That was an insane draw. Um, I'm still going to... No, we're probably going to just hit this. Wait, let's see. 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's 6 damage in total. I'm going to get Davriol out of the way. We're not killing, uh... It's got parentheses on the mana cost. I've never seen that. Can we do anything with our cards? No. We just untap and draw. Parentheses on the Golos cost. Ooh! Is that good? I don't know. Let's find out. N not really. This is decent. Um, I can even make a shark now. But I think it's fine as a regular just enchantment to play. We have a lot of 3 mana mana rocks. And all of them are now 3-3 three, three sharks. That seems pretty good. No gods to get with the world tree. Yep, let's get rid of a land again. Don't care. Well, that was a good draw. They see three more cards and draw two of them. Eliminate, that's that's fine, sure. They've gained, like, 20 life off of the Meat Hook Massacre, which is funny. Alright, Crocs is unfortunate, especially with emergency powers gone. I can't shuffle it away, it's gonna come back immediately and kill us actually quite quickly. Yeah, it looks like we're going to lose this. That is so depressing. Uh, if I had time to find the Casualties of War, I feel like I would have... This game would be very different, but I didn't. I, for some reason, couldn't find it. I don't know. I bet it was there, too. I just literally could not find it. And they have a temple. Oh, wow, that's a great draw here. We can tap their... Oh, we can tap Croxa. So actually, it's not the end of the world here. Yeah, like I said, we're going to make a lot of 3-3 three, three, uh, <laughs> three, three sharks, given the nature of uh, our deck with all the 3 minute stuff. But yeah, we actually get to just tap down the Croxa. In the funniest way, too. It's the most random, like, mana rock tap effect, like an icy manipulator. Scry X, where X is the amount... And then draw three. Okay. Scry five, draw three. Yeah, Nicol Bolas drawing them two cards a turn has completely just swung the game entirely in their favor. I wasn't able to pressure it enough. Because now we have to yet again worry about counter spells. Okay. They also have more life than their starting total. <laughs> They can kill their own Croxa to just keep recasting it out of the graveyard and kill me. Um, they probably don't see that line, but that is certainly a way to do it. And I can see it being very effective here. There's no reason to try to kill Croxa, because they'll just recast it. Um, this is actually one of the worst draws here. I can just foretell it. Maybe your opponent will respect it if I foretell it as a counterspell. Otherwise, it would probably get discarded to one of their 30 discard spells. I could have just d got rid of it with Nicol Bolas's plus. That's totally reasonable. But we didn't do that. Uh, let's get rid of a mana rock, I think. Seems fine. 
we're it's um it's impossible to recast Golos now because we've lost too many mana sources. Okay, yeah, this is we're just gonna lose now. We can't we can't catch up, and we have no cards in our deck that are uncounterable at this point. Okay. I don't have any way to interact with my own graveyard, so that didn't do anything. Everything that interacted with our graveyard is gone. I don't even know what's left in my deck, actually. I don't think there's anything in my deck left. Uh, I could expect this to resolve, but I... Whatever. I mean, even if it does resolve, it's it's really not. There's nothing in my deck, I don't think. Not off the top of my head. That's any good. And it doesn't resolve anyways, because why would it? We get a good shark, though. I mean, that's cool. We can poke. Okay, they made a little bit of a misplay there. Made me lose the wrong card? What the heck? Okay, well, now they need a different answer. Probably will find it. I think, yeah, they've, they've been playing this very loose. Obviously, they wanted me to sacrifice the, uh... Oh, it's mana cost. All right, so I actually would keep this. I gotcha. All right, they found an answer, though. Get rid of you. Okay. And we're dead, because they get to recast Croxa. Wow, that's unbelievable. If I found Casualties of War, that game would be completely different in that turn sequence. But uh, I didn't. I, for some reason, couldn't find it. I'm sure I glossed over it, like, twice, too, and I just didn't see it. So that is my bad. That sucks. <laughs> that was a cool game, though. I liked that game. That was fun. Super, super grindy. We cast Golos um, however many times it takes to get him to 21 mana, which is insane. I've never seen that before. Um, having 40 plus lands in that game also was really paying off fighting the uh, the Nicol Bolas there. But the fact that we couldn't stop Nicol Bolas just meant we fell behind incredibly fast. Okay. Um, Golos Mirror. Probably not a mirror. They probably have one and two minute cards. But fortunately we're on the play, so... If we were not on the play and they had a one or two minute rent spell, I think we lose quite often. But fortunately that is not what happened. We are on the play. Streamerfund.df followed me. Probably some bot. Do we want that? One, two, three. Yeah, we want that. We actually want that. We got our three. We got our five lands. The next three are untapped. All right. Well, they have one, which is to be expected in most Golos decks. We play this one, because I guess there's a chance we cycle this. We probably won't, but we could. Binding. Well, that was devastating. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, well, I guess they get Golos first now. Uh, we can Cruel Reality their Golos. Uh, but not immediately, so they get to use Golos, and we don't, if they choose to. There's a chance they don't. Cruel Reality is decent in this matchup, though, because if Golos is, like, the only creature... It could be kind of a double-edged sword, though. Oh, they didn't cast Golos! 
okay. Um, makes me think they have something else to cast. I seriously doubt they just leave up a counter spell. Yeah, all right, that's that's fair. I kind of I can kind of agree with that sequence, especially if you expect Golos to just die. It wouldn't, but it it could. So here we get uh, we don't really need colors. Yeah, we don't. This is black, right? We don't need colors, so we can get Field of the Dead for the first land here. It seems fine. Nope, don't want to land. So now if they cast Golos, we can just kill it. Right? No. Well, hmm. I don't know. If they have a land in hand, we can't. They have the land in hand. It doesn't matter if it was in hand or not. Cruel Reality will now be terrible, which is my primary critique of it. Um, Feel the Dead just completely nullifies this card to its entirety. Makes your 7 mana Mythic Rare do Stone Cold nothing. Um, I can comma and use it to activate it here, but that doesn't actually work because uh, reasons. They can just do it on their upkeep or in response. Blue, white, black, green. I'm confused. What are we missing? This is not a five color, so we need green. Do we activate Golos? I think that is the only thing I can do that's relevant. I don't like it at all. Oh my jeez. Alright, well, like I said, that's to be expected. We have 40 lands. I uh, couldn't cast this, and this is literally doing nothing. Oh! <laughs> We both whiffed. They get to play a land off of Golos. We don't. That is so funny. Perforos? What? Other creatures have haste. Okay. What? Why are you doing this? Why are you letting me kill your Golos? I don't understand. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There's no reason to let me kill Golos there. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, unless there's something I'm not seeing. Uh, I don't know why my opponent did that. Triple Mana Rock. Okay, I mean, that's better than triple land. Done with lands. No, I'm not kicking that. Play this as a black source. And uh, we can Haro, but I'll pick this up. It draws a bunch of cards here. I don't think I want to swing. Our opponent seems aggressive, so... We'll just, uh... Alright, um, Perforos made me think this is the case. This is the one that plays all the gods, and then I just lose, because they all have haste. The other Perforos just, like, one-shots you or something. I've never played with this strategy. But, uh, if you can pull it off, knock yourself out. But your deck has to have all of this in it, and that is not good, because you don't want that. But... Yep, when it works, it works. Like, you have to run um, a ton of cards that are really bad. But if you have the World Tree in 11 mana, um, you can just do this. Uh, I guess it, at any point when you get to 11 mana, you have this ability. Unless you have some in hand that are bad. Um, this is reasonable. Maybe I should give this a try. I just, I'm, on, I'm, I'm kind of unimpressed with that avenue. I've seen it a couple times now, though. The Perforos kind of gave it away. And I suppose the attack did, too, because Golos dying means um, if they needed a land, they can just cast Golos to get it. So I can see an argument for not letting Golos die. It didn't matter, but... It's certainly a cool way to win. Alright. Lost the, the last two games here. Back to Scythus. Yet again. I've played so much Scythus uh, today. Against Scythus, that is. I don't like this hand, I don't think. We're on the draw, actually. Maybe I do like this. Yeah, we do. Because we actually do have a third land here. 
These flip cards always throw me off. The colors are abysmal, but we're playing Golos, so it doesn't matter. All right. Three lands, three mana mana rock. Excuse me. Boral Signet. So we're all in on uh, red white here. That's kind of, oh, <laughs> really in on the red white. Uh, nope. I don't want any more Jeskai lands, please. Stop with the Jeskai. Do we want to keep this? No. It's a pretty decent chance we'll hit another land in the top, what, like three or something? Okay. What does this do? Gets plus, oh, plus two. Um, sure. All right. We drew something that's not a Jeskai card. Play this, play Midnight. Whoops. Nope, can't. That needs blue. Play Boros. Lock it. And then next turn, Golos for the World Tree, so we can unscrew our mana. This looks like a Aura deck more than a conventional Scythus list. That's pretty cool. I can respect that. Could be wrong. Could just be the nature of the draw, but we'll see. Uh, yep, yeah, World Tree here. And then our mana woes are forgotten. We can play this untap next turn and then go straight into Emergent Ultimatum. Yep, and this is the gargantuan difference between um, Golos and Jota. We don't have to have Golos survive to do our 7 mana busted stuff. Uh, we could take an extra turn here. Why can I not cast this? Oh, because the Boros locket, it doesn't let me cast it. Oh, ooh, ooh. All right. Taking an extra turn doesn't feel good when I'm not doing anything else next to it. Uh, Gullos getting Field of Dead seems fine. I can block this now. This isn't doing much. It does slow me down, kind of? Kind of? Because my stuff costs two more next turn. So I can't actually go into this. But we still have other things to do. Which I'm not upset over. Namely, Fierce Empath. Alright, Heliard's Punishment is not a end-all be-all but that is a solid answer it does stop it from doing things for quite a while actually <clears throat> excuse me quite a while okay they have basically infinite life but uh we can just keep blocking all right um do we just no i can't cancel that non-creatures until your next turn. Okay, so take an extra turn doesn't remove that. Claws. I think I'm going to Fierce Empath for Agent of Treachery? There's no hard counters, and having the ability to steal like their best card of all time seems pretty solid, so we're going to do that. Get rid of this. Play this tapped. Pick up our Hippo Boy. And then tap this. Before I forget. Alright, so they have to give... Whenever you cast an enchantment spell... Huh, you know what? I didn't know this was a card either. That is another copy of your commander. That seems pretty solid. I'll put the Empath in the graveyard. Hopefully there's no Teferi's Protection or Heroic whatever, because both of those are a problem. The fact that they didn't do anything makes me think it's one of the two. So I'm actually not going to go for it. I'm just going to do other things instead for now like this this isn't too strong but uh I like it enough to pull it off um, we would like to make land drops I guess I can cast this first I will guarantee an extra turn again with this because there's more than one extra turn in my deck opponent doesn't want to play magic anymore so I'm pretty sure they left up like heroic intervention or it seems like it was an Aura Boggles list without the Hexproof. So they're running all of the Hexproof combat trick spells to protect their Scythus. So this was not ever going to do what it what I wanted it to. In fact, it probably makes sense to just steal a land. Or this. Um, 
But when you're playing this style and you don't have flying or trample, which they actually can give it both in this deck, um, it's not doing too much. That's scary. And yeah, we win. I still think it's always right when your opponent casts Soul Tile Tomatum to force them to show you what the card is. You know, I could, for all intents and purposes, not have any good hits or targets, and they scoop for no reason. I could always misclick. I could uh, make a terrible decision. They could make a decision that throws me off and uh, put back a card I would never put back. And it ends up um, paying off that I like tripped myself up and got two cards that don't really work well in the scenario. Always want to see what your opponent gets. I, I It does take a second, right? You have to sit there and wait. Because it's, it's one of the slower cards in the game to resolve, but um, it's certainly it's certainly uh, worth it, in my opinion, to at least try. Extremely unlikely that um, you're not just screwed, but maybe I just like to play to my outs. I don't know. I like to I like to play it out. Unless I really see the writing on the wall, I like to play it out. Alright, so they have a one mana ramp spell that is not just green, unfortunately. Like Llanowar Elves. This just puts in something permanent. It does require two cards, and this doesn't actually do anything itself, which is nice. You essentially go down a card. Oh, wow. Alright. Fumigate just got real good. I love when Fumigate kills, like, mana dorks and stuff, right? Like, this is... This card is just so... <laughs> I just really don't like it. Um, Alright, so we blew this. We... Of these, I think the Mana Rock is the weakest. So we go for one of these instead. Probably this one. I know this one could cost more later, but... This seems fine. We have all the colors in play already, which is hilarious. Hand demands double blue and double white. We have double white already, so we can get double blue. And then I can fumigate. Hopefully they just cast a creature that's not Uro. They do not. They sorcery speed omen, so no land in hand. Um, in this scenario, they probably would have preferred that this itself be a land. There's always an argument for that. Looks like they found it. They scried on top, so... Ooh, they're, they're saucing me with the land here. They got basically a Nissa land, right? Alright, so we're gonna go for our commander. I don't know, Uro does have a lot of counter spells, but it's not the end of the world if it gets countered in this instance. So I will just do that. It's fine. <laughs> okay, that's a terrible counter spell to see but there's nothing i can do about it we're under no serious pressure they got six mana they haven't even tried to cast uro yet i feel like uro would have been better than this wouldn't it maybe if you really wanted to hit a land this is better okay well we don't draw extra cards a turn not really this will show us if they get a counter spell. They do not they get time warp, which is fine. They have a planeswalker that doesn't tick up, so time warp gets a little weaker. All right, they foretell, so we cannot. We still can't cast uh, Golos because we went. It costs two more. We can play double mana rock. We can uh, time warp ourselves. I guess we can lead with this. See what's on top. That's good. Um, so, double mana rock or time warp? Time warp doesn't feel good. Sweeping their board doesn't feel good either. Maybe it, maybe it's fine. No, I think double mana rock is better. I just want to start getting ahead here to be able to recast Golos and, um, from here on out, cast him like twice in a row. Seems nice. 
I do have to get this actual thing to resolve, and uh, now it's not going to because they have a counter spell. They probably have two counter spells. I can force the them out of the thing with Karuga, right? I can get one out of the way with Karuga. Karuga's a funny card to counter. It's basically an 8 mana draw 2 in this instance. But, okay, you know. That's fine. It just gets a counter spell out of their hand. They don't even counter it, which I totally respect. Because it doesn't do anything. Because I'm an idiot. Because of Narset. So now it's just a 5-4 blocker. That's hilarious. I completely forgot. I'm like, we don't draw extra cards, guys. We do, And then I just completely forgot that I could draw extra cards there. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Literally walked into the card that I talked about twice. God, Narset's so depressing when it works. Oh, well, we move on. We're in a very bad predicament. Um, they can sacrifice the omen to do things. They can just time warp themselves to play Uro and do other things at the same time. Yep. I guess they can't immediately cast Uro. One, two, three. Manually tapping? What? Why? You bounce Karuga? That seems strange, doesn't it? Alright, well, now they have Uro in play, and, um... Oh, wait, no. Because Brazen Bar doesn't go to the... Oh, no, they still got it, because of the time warp, right? And they can leave up a counterspell. They take three. We go under nine. They have nine in play. We can't cast anything, because of their counterspell. And there's nothing I can double up on counter-wise that... Wait, what? What did they just do? They picked up Time Warp and are not going to cast it? I don't know what this... what all this means. Okay, well, I mean, they foregoed Guarantee Lethal. Kind of strange, in my opinion. Kind of strange. Um. Alright, well, we lead with this. We can get an uncounterable card. Maybe our opponent's scared of that. I can bait this counterspell out. I don't know if that's any good, but we did it. And then we can take an extra turn? We cannot, because we don't have double blue. Great. Well, in that case, I basically have to do this. So they cast Uro, and then take an extra turn and do it again. Or swing with it, so we go down to four. But we're not immediately dead. But we're in an abysmal spot. Karuga's not drawing cards because of this Narset. If we could have cast... I'm trying to think. Was there a way? Did I mess that up? I feel like I messed up my tapping. Yeah, I should have been able to cast this. Okay, they did they yet again did not take an extra turn. I don't think my math was wrong. I'm pretty sure they had an avenue of victory there. Maybe they didn't, I don't know. Now I'm just not certain of anything. Do I cast Golos? Time warp doesn't seem like it's doing much without a board. You can get Field of the Dead to start chump blocking. I feel like I have way too much time here. Put this here, I guess. Pass. Okay, so now we can start blocking. Alright, they do the thing with the stuff here. Fine. Maybe they just don't want to time warp until they have another way to pick it back up. Like regrowth. Or a way to cast it out of the graveyard with that new, like, mono blue wizard. The Mono Blue Wizard passed in flames. I don't know. 
I feel like I should be dead, but I'm not. This is a strange attack. Can they replay Golos if... I mean, Golos. Uro, if I kill it, they can, actually, so... I guess I just chump block it. Also, if they just bounce Golos in response, I uh, lose both zombies. And then the extra turn almost always kills me. <laughs> Okie dokie. They didn't upkeep Scry with the Omen. So there's something good in hand already? I don't know. Let's find out. They have a land in hand. They declined to put it into play. I don't know why. Golos isn't even that strong here. Opponent doesn't know that and probably has an answer to it. But uh, as we know, Memory Deluge. So you look at the top four, right? X is in the top four and you put two in hand and then you flash it back and top seven and put two in hand okay Cosmo's doing stuff this card is so like complicated <laughs> yep there's the answer we kind of figured was in their hand um i don't expect anything from from us to work i need to i literally have to cast this pre-combat or i'm dead Okie dokie. Uh, can we... No, we can't crack his and draw it, so... Alright. Um, I'm kind of all in on a single zombie. Because I feel like Karuga isn't good enough to just... Oh, wait, no, I killed Narset. I can actually just run this out now. Never mind. So this is decent, I guess. Get this, get another zombie. Extra turn. Alright. Uh... Still kind of in a sketchy situation, though. But I feel like we've had way too much time. I think this game should have been over. Opponent might have missed lethal. Okay, so they finally do the Cosma thing. Looks like a sign of desperation, maybe. Uh, there's no way to give Earl flying. <laughs> Could give it, like, trample, I guess. Protection from green wouldn't do it. I think I have to sweep the board, which is not great against Uro decks, but that's just the power of Uro, right? So, what are you going to do? They can scry pre-combat. Looks like they're thinking about that. And then swing, draw the card they scry on top. Mass manipulation? Okay, it doesn't immediately kill me, and it doesn't stop Wrath of God, which I feel like might resolve... Did they finally put a land in play? Yep, it's a temple too. Okay. So we block, and then we bank on a sweeper working. Um, if the extra turn doesn't work, this probably will. They need double counter spell. Make sure I tap right this time. We do have nine men at least. I feel like they're very uninterested in this resolving. So let's see. Take an extra turn. Wow. Um, okay. You know what? Sometimes that happens. Let's see if this resolves. That's annoying. Balagate Recovery was really good here. Um, because now I get to pick up I get a free damage in two. They're not going to block, obviously. Um, I can pick up Fumigate. Yeah, that was a good draw. That was one of the things we needed to happen. Have happen. Can we get Mardu Ultimatum and cast it? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can. No, we don't have the World Tree. We don't have the mana. We don't have perfect mana like that. Yeah, they just don't have the mana. That was super close, though. Mario Ultimatum would be kind of the same, actually. It's actually quite similar. Yeah, it's not even that, like, 
much better. All right, swing with this. I mean, I could have swung first before I picked this up. Maybe got some more damage in with the zombies, but I didn't. So we sweep the board, gain a fair amount of life, sort of. Get Golos back to where he belongs. We play this. And then we play land. All right, so now we can start casting Golos. Um, this does not tap Uro. If we had the tap Uro one, we'd be really happy here, but we don't. Surprisingly, Ujin is not strong here, especially if it's just lightning bolting a zombie. I mean, it's still good, but it's not, like, insane. They have a counterspell, so we're going to draw a card. There's no way on Earth they don't just cast Uro there. No way. So it's obviously a counterspell. Um, well, there's nothing I can do about it, but I'm still going to crack the, the mana rock. I, technically, it could be this. Maybe? Actually, no. It needs seven mana. Okay, so it wasn't a counterspell. I, I couldn't tell you what it is. I can get the World Tree to get rid of our mana woes. Feels a little bit better than um, Scrying 1 here. I could be wrong, but... And putting a counter on a zombie doesn't do anything, because it still dies to Ujin's thing. And it also just... Uh, um, the minus zero Ujin resets my zombies over and over. So it doesn't do anything either. Maybe it's a bounce spell. I don't know what it is. This has to be 10. Yeah. I think we're fine if this goes off. Right? Like, it's not... They have a bunch of counter spells. There's not a ton of permanence other than lands that they're going to slam into play. Drawing 7 is obviously really good, but... It's kind of the weakest Ujin can be, so we'll take it. They had no counter spell, and they declined to cast Uro. I don't know why. When I'm in top deck mode and the only real play I have is Golos, posturing a counterspell doesn't make sense. They had a counterspell. They just didn't want to counter Golos. I don't think I agree with that, actually. I don't think I agree with that. I think you counter Golos. Because you have card draw in Uro. You don't really need to do this. Um, that makes me think they have another counterspell. I don't know. Tamio that can pick up the extra turn and then they ultimate Uro I'm <laughs> mixing up things Ujin but we're not just dead in fact they it kind of makes sense to just keep lightning bolting me in the face actually I think I will block Uro completely but it doesn't feel like that's doing anything I think we I think they finally got it here. They shocked themselves. What is that? What is that doing? What are you doing on 3? Nothing. So you shocked yourself for no reason. Okay. Maybe it was a mistake. Oh. So they'll shock themselves for no reason. Well, now they can't swing with Uro. I mean, they can but I kind of get my thing back. All right, they were looking for the other extra turn. I feel like minusing Ujin before you plus Tamio makes a little bit more sense because you could always just draw what you were looking for. And then you can plus for a different card. Like, they... I mean, there's a decent chance they drew it, right? There's an over 50% chance they drew it because they've seen over half their deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we're screwed now. Oppo opponent played it extremely conservatively and uh, it ended up paying off in the long run, but uh, I think the game should have been over significantly earlier. This is a cool card to see, though. Draw your second card's turn, make it the cat. X is a game more cards in your hand. Not the strongest, though. But it's cool. They got the old Renin 7, which works really nice with Uro, right? Because you put all the cards in your uh, graveyard.
All right. Um, I don't know what gets us out of this. A sweeper again? Doesn't really deal with the cards in play, though. I like seeing Urodex pop off. It satisfies me. But we're all but dead now. Oh, we also lost <laughs> we also lost Field of Dead. Joke's on you, I have twenty six basics. And there was a turn sequence where we did mistap um, with the first sweeper, or I think it was these two, uh, yeah, where I should have been able to cast this a little bit earlier. Not sure if it would have mattered, but uh, certainly something to take note of. We didn't draw anything at all. We can re, we can redraw actually. It still draws zero. If our opponent counters it, they know for a fact we cannot draw anything for the turn. So there's a very good reason to just counter it. In fact, I think we are dead if they counter this. All right, they didn't. Um, because remember, if they counter it, I don't draw a card. They know I have no cards in hand, and then they just untap, swing for five in the air, lightning bolt, another three. I block one, two, three, take. So we're not dead dead. No, this can kill one of my blockers. Close to being dead. I can force a trade? I can force a trade here. Oh no, they have a 1-1. One, one. Oh, dude. No, they have too many things I just don't... I was about to say I can recast Golos, but... <clears throat> no, that's game. Alright, now we're just literally dead, so... Uh, yeah, not a, not a good showing. I was having a... I won every single game but one when I was... Uh, playing off stream and now I think I just went even I'm pretty sure I just went even yeah uh, maybe I lost one more than I won um, still certainly stronger with Golos as a commander than Jota and I really like this version of Golos a lot it's very fun to play I love all the three mana mana rocks um, sweepers are always nice you could try some graveyard hate uh there is an argument for that. I am a fan of some graveyard hate. Same with regrowth. Maybe regrowth wants to be in here somewhere instead of like Dryad. I'm not actually that big on Dryad. Uh, or Azusa. The things that pull lands out of your hand extra or I'm not super big on. Uh, what would have gotten us out of that game in particular? Neza Hall would have been decent but not too strong. Chandra would have been all right, but they gained so much life from Uro, the plus isn't great, and the minus wasn't really going to kill anything. It doesn't kill Uro, so maybe not. Ujin, we don't have eight mana Ujin in here. Um, Cruel Reality would have been decent. They did not have Field of the Dead in play, so this would have kept things in check until... 8-mana Ujin exiled everything 7 or more. Then at that point, I suppose nothing matters, right? Um, yeah, it just seemed like it was... A, it just seems like a difficult matchup, honestly. Bunch of counter spells, a decent body on board that's recurring. Just kind of difficult. And Narset shut down my Karuga, because I'm not the brightest bulb in the box. But compared to this Golo deck, where you're running all like the... Cheaper ramp spells and earlier interaction like Swords to Plowshares, Cantrips, um, the efficient counter spells, uh, all the, yep, Minotaurs ramp spells. Actually, the whole deck costs like three. It's a complete opposite end of the spectrum Golos deck because everything costs like three or less instead of four or more. It's kind of cool, right? There's just so many ways to play Golos. Um, but yeah, these are, it's, it's fun to play. I like it more than this version, I think. I I feel as though I can get away with maybe seven less lands and uh, put in more highly impactful spells We because we're pretty happy not really hitting lands after our fifth land. It does mean it's a little bit harder to recast Golos. But you have seven more cards in your deck that are good 
to just cast um, pound for pound very powerful spells that made the process of ramping into Golos and the Golos ramp pay off worthwhile. So I could put Ulamog back in the deck, right? Ulamog wouldn't have really been good against what just happened to us, but uh, it's certainly probably better than the 42nd land. So we can look into doing that. I don't think I'm going to do it right now. I really like how the list is as is, but it's certainly an argument for it. Like even this, right? This is basically an agent of treachery. This can blow up and you lose the permanent, but uh, there's not a lot of naturalized effects, right? As we've seen. And you can immediately use things that your opponent have. And we're kind of off the Golos Activation Reliance Package Plan idea, whatever you want to call it. So we could actually um, cast X spells like we're at Masterminds Acquisition. Not Masterminds Acquisition. Mass manipulation, um, stuff like that. Even Bolas' Citadel. I think that card's a little bit underplayed, in my opinion. Could even play something like that. With 40 lands, this is not great, though. But, uh, like I said, just drop some lands, add some of these other larger things, and I think you'd be happy. Shoot, even a card like... Uh, we saw a Golas player play this once, and I'm like, no, there's no way... They win now, and it's hard to con it's hard to say that you ever lose after you get this card, but it's entirely possible. Uh, it costs seven mana. I really like the card. I've never played it, but I feel like this is the kind of deck that could do it. If you had a way to get omniscience into play the next go round, that would be nice too. But without a way to have infinite cards in hand. I don't like discarding 38 cards. Because we're not really graveyard based. Or I tend not to be. Um, if you had run in 7, I guess you could put like 30 lands in your graveyard and pull them all out. Because you're pretty likely to draw run in 7, right? You drew 30. No, you drew like 40, 45 cards or something, right? So. But yeah, um, certainly an argument to shave some lands, as there are. Let's look at the exact number. 42. You can def There's more than 42, because you have cards like this that the thing does not track. There's like 45 lands in the deck. You definitely uh, shave some lands for more impactful spells. Jin Kataxias, Ulamog, um, Overwhelming Splendor. Um, things I don't own and I'm not ready to craft yet because I'm free to play. I only got one myth. Definitely ways to make this a little bit stronger pound for pound, especially cards out of hand, not just like hoping you top deck things or banking on goals hitting them. So yeah, thanks for watching though, regardless. It's definitely a fun deck. I like it. This list is cool. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.